Well, spring has sprung, which means it is time to start getting the water going on the orchards again, which means making sure that all of the sprinklers and everything are working. We use micro sprinklers in all of our orchards and they're in a constant state of needing to be repaired because of badgers and coyotes and machines and people that they, over the course of the year, get chewed up pretty bad. So that is one of my jobs throughout the year to go through and fix them. So I thought I might do just a fun little day in the life of a farmer video. We'll see. Basically going along and checking the tees because that's where the water comes up from the underground pipes and it comes up to that tee and goes along the entire row of trees and has where water comes out of those little sprinklers right there and what and the animals always like to come through and chew the hose right where it comes out of the tees so they can get water which is good for them and awful for me. I probably spend four out of seven days during the week in spring and summer, writing these lines and making sure that all of the sprinklers are working and that every tree is getting watered. Not gonna be fixing any sprinklers today because we're looking at having a rainstorm here soon. So the trees don't exactly need water right now, but it's been warming up. So we're gonna have to give them water here soon anyways. And if I can go through and fix the big, blowouts where the tree where the water comes out of the tees and is all broken that'll save us a fair amount of time and headache because when we turn the water on it won't flood a good portion of the entire row when we get started to go through the actual sprinklers so that's just what i'm doing today driving around fixing the hoses where they come out of the tees Good that way. These ones are good. Uh, I can see a little broken two wings right up here. This is not by the T, but yep, something chewed the heck out of that for sure. <sighs> Let's see if we have enough to stretch it. Oh yeah, that'll work. So here's the way these couplers work. They have a kind of barbed but flared end right here that goes into the tube and it spreads the tube out to create a good seal. And then these screw down or twist down rather probably and clamp it in place. And so you'd put this on the other end and that way it creates a nice good seal to let water keep flowing out without any leaks. I'll fix these ones later. They're not broken. They just need to be moved back out of the way for where the mower will hit them. Oh, there's one broken by the T. None that way. So, to fix these, cut off the chewed portion. You can either use a knife, or a good stout pair of scissors, or even some pruning shears. And cut it out 
all of the cutoff part. You can see this has very clearly been chewed by something. I'm gonna guess badgers, only because I've seen them move in recently and they're known to chew stuff up. And then you have two nice clean ends and you wanna bring them together, put them in a coupler. But looks like this one, not gonna be long enough. So gotta get out a new strip of tube. So we have this roll of tubing and measure once, cut twice. Attach the new tube onto the T. And a coupler on this end. And tighten down the coupler. And there we go. Hell yeah. That is one of the cool things about coming out here and doing this is just a little treasures you find. I always love finding antler sheds. I'm a big fan of bones anyways. So finding deer antler shed out here, it's just little prizes. Uh... Yeah, see it's not too hard or not too bad. Fix all this stuff but when it's dozens of them across hundreds of acres, it gets tiring. Especially when it's both of them. Freaking animals. Oh, Scar, while well, checking the other one, I found a third one. Lovely. I love when they chew it off super close to the tee because it just becomes impossible, impossible to get this off. Come on. I need another coupler. God dang. <sighs> All right, keep that in mind. Don't place the tripod over the tube, Tim. So fun fact, immature almonds or green almonds, they are edible. Some people actually eat them with the whole shell and hole on, which I find odd, but hey, you do you, boo. But they're nice and soft. And you can crack them right open. And you can see the immature hole and shell there and the immature nut. And the immature nut is a nice, juicy, squishy little treat it's filled with a kind of jello of sorts uh, sometimes can be bitter but for the most part it's a nice little snack when you're out driving around doing all this this is 
is why I always have bags of couplers with me. So that's another thing they like to do is chew the little tubing that comes out of the main tube to sprinklers. So this entire tube has to be swapped out now. Great. I'll leave the sprinkler there so I can come back and at least replace just a tube. Generally when checking these really overgrown orchards, I'm on a quad or ATV because it's a lot easier to dodge branches. But since I'm fixing large swaths of tubing, I need to carry all of it here in the back with me. And this is just the best job for that. Round it around and so close. in one of my more recent videos about flying over my orchard looking at the bloom with my drone and this especially is the orchard that I was really mapping out because these variety of trees have had major issues you can see how they're a lot more spindly and a lot more branches as compared to over here branches that come out and don't have as many leaves and nuts on them there's just something going wrong with the variety and we were able to map out this entire orchard using the drone to figure out exactly where all the trees are so that we can come back through and cut the boughs off and graft new healthy wood onto it. So we'll see how well they do. Another big problem is since the trees aren't able to take up as much nutrients into the branches because of the whole rootstock issue or whatever the issue was, we end up with a lot of we end up with a lot of what we call suckers, which is essentially shoots from the, the roots, shoots from the roots coming up that rob nutrients from the tree. I mean, no nuts are gonna get produced on that really at all ever. And it causes major problems when it comes time to harvest them because when you go to clamp the tree, you're gonna clamp onto these tiny little uh, suckers and it creates kind of like a sandpaper effect against the trunk of the tree, which could potentially kill it. So that's, a, that's another job I feel like I'm constantly doing is driving through these orchards and spraying herbicides to knock down the weeds and knock down the suckers. There's always maintenance to be done in orchards. Yeah, I was hoping we weren't gonna have to come back through and prune the suckers, but these ones are way too tall for the spraying at this point. This one just came apart. I always like it when the couplers remain here and I can just quickly pop them back together. I'm tired, boss. Should have grabbed some extra tube. You see the berms in a couple of ways out is all nice and clean, which is a combination of the shade and a sterilant we put down to keep the seeds from germinating. We don't spray it in the middles because that's obviously a lot more money to put out here. We generally just mow the orchard several times a year. 
especially right before we start uh, plant, right before we start harvesting them. Everyone always worries about how much water ammons take, and yes, they do take a fair amount, but it's not like that water's free. Back in like the peak of the recent drought, we were spending over $600 an acre foot of water. And that money's going you know, right back into the economy. And we use these micro sprinklers out here, which we are meticulous about making sure they're not broken and flooding the orchards, making sure they're not plugged so every tree is getting an efficient amount of water. We use these sprinklers to try and cut down on using as much water as we possibly can because I mean, we're not, we're trying to run our business, trying to provide food for the world. And we're definitely not trying to just waste water or fertilizer or fuel or anything here. We account for every single gallon. One other interesting thing to think about, especially as our society, we have more and more people going uh, vegetarian and vegan. Almonds are a huge source of protein and carbohydrates. So, I mean, I'm very open about being a meat eater myself, but we're growing stuff for people to easily get the protein and carbohydrates that they're missing out on from not eating meat by growing almonds. I'm not trying to toot our own horn all that much, just trying to give kind of a different take on things, I guess. These trees produce about 2,000 pounds an acre of edible food. 2,000 pounds is a good year, generally is around our average. We produced upwards of 2,500, and it's all edible protein. Another way you can tell badgers are doing it because they like to dig and look for all the rodents that are living in here. We had a big, big problem with gophers recently, but all the winter rains have mostly wiped them out, or at least really reduced their numbers. But that right there is for sure badger sign digging into those holes to try and find it. I never actually even thought we had badgers in California until my former employee ran into one many, many years ago. And then uh, last year I was out flying around and saw one out by the creek flying around on my drone. Sure enough, had the very distinct white stripe and everything. I had no idea badgers really exist in California. Shows how much I know. <sighs> I know I saw one a ways away. The other passes I made, I was not sure which one. So the T's are the same as the couplers, they just have a bottom on it that screws in right onto the top. Oh, that whole lever right there is broken off. Oh well. So this screws right onto the top and fits on just like all the other couplers. Perfect. At least this will get turned right back into fertilizer, right? Last pass. Thank God. And that's a wrap for this one. I have a, I have two other orchards that I need to do this on, but one is a completely different size of tubing. Sorry, I've been hammering stuff. And the other is way, way, way too overgrown to bring the side by side in. So I think I will save those for another day. Yeah, there's no way I'm driving through that row on the side by side. So yeah, that was just a little 
day in the life of a Hammond farmer going out, doing the preseason, fixing his stuff. Gonna be doing it for the whole rest of the year. Let me know if there's any other farming stuff that uh, you guys would like me to go over and do something like this with. See you next time. Mm -hmm.